Okay, so before this video actually begins, I just wanted to uh, just wanted to say a couple things. So, uh, a lot of people wonder what I do on this channel, and that's kind of a hard question to answer, even for me. And I feel like I know what I'm doing because I'm out here. I fix cars on this channel, but I don't just do that. I try to go back to the basics of everything and try to talk about how everything works uh, how it applies from 1940s all the way up to 2017 the changes if we go back to our basics to our roots then everything that we know builds off of carburetors off of distributors off of off of drums off of these basic starting points all of this new technology builds off of that you know we wouldn't have computers and cars in 2017 and in the 90s if we hadn't have started with a basic carburetor setup, carbureted setup. So whenever I do like quick time lapses and stuff, that's not because I don't want to explain stuff. It's because I, sometimes whenever I go to look for a YouTube video, I'm not necessarily looking for everybody to explain every little piece because some of it you can pretty much figure out on, it by, on, on, your, on your own and the more that you do mechanicing and the more that you practice it the less you're going to need these videos so rather than just pushing you through the door and stranding you on your own I try to talk about things that are difficult or don't make sense or are uncommon that's the things that i like to talk about and i work on a, I, I own a pretty common truck you know it's a 95 f-150 it's pretty common uh there's a lot of them everywhere so i could make this channel all about this truck right here but that's not that's not what i'm here for i'm not here to make a video just about this truck and just about things you can do to this truck i want to make it centered around every vehicle and I want you to take this, these videos, and they'll be versatile for whatever you're doing. So, for example, this video is going to be all about cleaning fuel injectors. And the things that I show you in this video, you can apply to any vehicle that's fuel injected. So, you can open up the solenoids, spray the cleaner through, and all that stuff, just like I do in this video, with any vehicle. It doesn't have to be a 95 F-150 with, with a V8 in it. It doesn't have to be that. You know, and there's a lot of videos on how to clean injectors. Um, but, there, and there is a special tool. And uh, that's another thing, too, that a lot of people don't understand is what special tools do I need? Sometimes you can just make them. And in this video, I made mine. Um, so, yeah. I know I know that I kind of took this one on, like, a sad start, not a happy, or not an uppity uh, beginning. But a lot of people just ask me kind of what I'm doing here. And I don't want... To just be known as a mechanic so yes I'm a mechanic I know how to work on cars but I also know how to work on boats I know how to work on uh, small engines lawnmowers they're all if we go back to our basics we can understand all of it so in a video from one of my subscriber specials I actually tore apart the rear end of a lawnmower and I wanted to I wanted to I didn't really get to explain a lot of it because that video wasn't great but the reason that I do lawnmowers and I do small engines is because they go off the same basic components as a larger vehicle. So like, for example, this one has a drive shaft that goes to it from the transmission. Well, on a lawnmower, the transmission and axle are made into one assembly, just like a front wheel drive car is. A front wheel drive car doesn't have a drive shaft. It's, you know, it's all in there together. So that's where we got probably started out our, for our inspiration from would have been from the rear which, which would have been from the lawnmower at least I'm not saying that that's where front wheel drive cars came from I don't know that but I'm just saying if we apply our knowledge of that to that and change it and change the details and make them more robust and you know just 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 change things up and make it where it's more durable and it can handle the heavy loads and it can go faster and it can do all these things that the lawnmower can't do but now we have it in a car but we still have our platform right so you can't build a building without dirt right 
you can't go and pour a shop floor without dirt underneath it. And uh, I just want to kind of talk about what what I do on this channel. Uh, the F100 build is something that is difficult. I mean, difficult because. I'm taking things that weren't made to go together and putting them together. And for a lot of people, that's like, oh, two, 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 I'm done. A lot of people have a shop. A lot of people have a welder. A lot of people have things that I don't have, you know. So I'm very limited on what I can do and what I can use. So I'm going to do my best to make that big block F100 the best that it can be. The engine, I've still been working on it. Uh, it is taking longer than expected. Uh, just because of some things like the, actually the oil pan is what's stopping me up right now because the 429 came out of a Lincoln so it was a it was a, it was a car so I had a front sump oil pan that doesn't work on a truck you have to have a mid sump or rear sump and great we can change the oil pan no not that simple uh, the front sump the oil pump just bolts to the center and the pickup tube just goes straight down well this one the pickup tube actually bolts to one of the one of the main journals. Or one of the main bolts so I have to go get a main bolt uh, from a 460 a newer model 460 so yeah but the big block F100 is getting done uh, that's a project that's going to take a lot more of back to your basics how does this work on this channel I love to talk about how things work you know what the transfer of power is because in my opinion that helps you figure things out so there's problems that I've ran into that no one's been able to solve and that I've had to solve on my own. Uh, for example, this thing was, uh, whenever I had to fix it, the intake was clogged. No one could figure that out. I unclogged the intake and make sure all the airways are clear. Runs like a champ, drives like a champ. I never had another problem out of it. So, understanding how things work is important. So, I think I'm done ranting. Uh... This intro will probably be entirely longer than it needed to be, and I do apologize for that in advance. But uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you take away some. I hope you take something away from it, whether it's now I know how to make this tool, or now I know what a fuel injector looks like if you're brand new, or now you maybe have a new idea of how to clean or a new method. You know, whatever you take away from it, as long as you learn something, I I'm happy. That's all I'm here for. You know, I'm here to teach everybody something and pass on my wisdom. And uh, whoever whoever came up with the phrase, uh, old does not mean wise, was a very smart man. Because that is true. Uh, old does not mean wise. I've met some old people who don't know anything. And then I've met old people who I don't even know how they figured out what they figured out. You know, I don't even know how I figured out some of the things I figured out. You know, people ask me the same thing. Well, how do you know that? Experience 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 is worth its weight in gold i'll tell you that right now anyways guys so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you at the end i'm gonna be gonna be go so today i'm gonna be going over something very simple and that is uh fuel injectors um if you have taken these out of your vehicle to replace clean whatever uh there's ways to clean them i actually have a method uh and I'm not going to show in this video, but I will, uh, I might in another video. Anyways, today I'm going to show you how to replace the O-rings on your injectors. Now, whenever you buy a rebuild kit for your injectors, the first kit I bought did not come with um, this little thing right here. And uh, let me just... So this little thing right here actually kind of goes over the end. Well, there's actually even a little card in here. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, you want to put this over the end of it. Kind of like that, I guess. I don't think this is exactly made for this. Anyway, it'll work really great for this. But anyway, you basically put the injector over here. And you can use it to slide it down over there. Now, 
you don't want to tear these new injectors so what I like to do is have a little bit of WD-40 I prefer this non aerosol stuff right here it comes in basically a squirt bottle I really like this stuff for doing things like this um, it makes it a whole lot easier because you're not wasting it and the great part is if you run out you can buy the big thing at WD-40 and just refill this one as soon as I figure out how to open the top on it regardless uh, just spray a little bit on it it kind of lubed up it should just kind of slip down in place there we go and as you can see the new o-ring is on there um, now it's going to be a little big because you just stretched it but after you put it inside the fuel rail and inside the intake it'll uh, shrink back down so um, I'm unsure if you can do this on the other side so if you can't it's better if you have like a little cup I'm going to grab one so say your injectors did not come with this little tool right here for putting our rings on the injectors like I've done right here okay say it didn't come with that you can just do it by hand and it's a little difficult um, but it's really not that bad well I, I, I mean to say so if it didn't come with that it's a little more difficult but it's still not that bad you basically just want to kind of, if you've ever put a piston ring on a piston, just kind of work it around it just like that. It should fall right in place. Uh, I'll show you one more time because I'm sure that that wasn't great. And uh, like I said, guys, just make sure that you soak them in WD-40. I'll pour WD-40 in the cup and I have the O-rings in there just soaking. makes it a little bit easier to where you don't have to waste as much. And then you just want to start it. Pops right on. Not really that difficult to be honest with you and now to get the old ones off I like to have picks for this I find that makes my life a lot easier uh, picks are pretty cheap um, if you're gonna be doing injectors I recommend picking up a set and you wanna just kinda get it out from under there and just work it around like that right there and bam old o-ring is off and those can go in the trash because they're very dry rotted on this one um, so now, if you want to, something I would do, spray a little bit of WD-40 on the actual injector itself. Go ahead and grab your O-ring. And uh, now, I will show you how to do these, but only once, because actually, I won't. I'm sorry, I lied to you. I'm going to use my tool here. This tool is very useful, especially for getting it over this side. The other side's not bad at all. You can pretty much do it real easily. But for this side, this tool makes that so much easier. I don't think I'm really doing a good job of throwing it here. So. I'm just going to go through now and just take all the old O-rings off the injectors. So think about it like this, however many injectors you're going to need, you're going to need double the amount of O-rings because you have O-rings that go on each side of the injector. So you're going to need an O-ring for both sides, so this is a V8 that I'm doing. So I actually need 16 O-rings. So I had to buy two packs and they both come with a tool. So you know, this tool is very useful. Like I said, you could probably order one. It's really nothing more than just a little cone. But, uh, yeah. Just let those O-rings kind of soak. Well, I take the rest of these old O-rings off.
And make sure that you have a nice clean work area whenever doing this. You don't want these new O-rings to get dirty. So. Okay, now all eight injectors have got new O-rings on the front and the back. Like I said guys, the back is as easy as just working it around that. For the front, I definitely recommend buying this tool. Um, I did do them on another truck and I didn't have this tool. And it was a pain to have to work it around this little cap. But with this, this fits right over that cap and you just slide it down and it pops into place. It's amazing. Uh... Like I said, guys, this should come with a little set. If not, you can probably request it. It doesn't look like it's a very difficult tool. So, yeah. That's how you put new O-rings on your injectors. Um, so, something that I like to do whenever I'm cleaning them, and I'll show you what I did. I actually found this method on YouTube. And it actually turns out to work surprisingly well. So, what I have here is, is a homemade tool. All right? So, if you don't have all rings on them, this right here, the end of this valve stem, will pop over this. I think, yeah, it's not wanting to do it with the O-ring. But, yeah, this pops over this right here. And you get your can of cleaner on this end. And then you power the injector and spray whatever you want through. Now, that's one way I did. I tried that way. Now, I watched another guy on YouTube that did it where you spray cleaner in here. And I used a very powerful detergent. I used uh, some Citri Solve. It's kind of like Purple Power, just a little bit, a little bit less powerful. You can probably use Purple Power for this, and it would probably work phenomenally well. And then he purged it. He let that sit in there 15 minutes, let it break up, whatever it could. And then you purge it using the method I just said: power it here and spray it through, and make sure that you've completely purged it of any of the solvent, so that whenever you put them in, they're just like new. So that's what I've done with these. I've already cleaned all these, so there's no need for me to show that. Um, and now I have new O-rings on, so I'm going to go back together with the truck. And I'm going to hope that these are good. One thing I will test before I put them back together is to make sure that they're not leaking. And the way to do that is you basically take your fuel rail and put all your injectors inside the fuel rail. And then turn the key on and see if anything seeps out. So, um definitely going to be doing that so yeah and right now I'm just kind of slipping all the injectors inside of the fuel rail because like I said I'm going to be testing it before I put it all together and that WD-40 really helps them slip if you're having trouble they feel a little tight just put a little bit more on it uh, WD-40 is cheap compared to having to you know run down to the store and buy a new you know, set, whole set of O-rings for a fuel injector. So there you go. That is all put back together. And now, let me try to get. It. So there we go. All the injectors are inside the fuel rail. Now I'm ready to bolt this thing on and see if it leaks. So I did not. I got the fuel injectors cleaned out, and I got it all back in the truck. Uh, this is clearly this clip is being taken like a long time after. Because I recorded this video, and then I recorded another video, and then I recorded another video, <laughs> and now I'm getting back to this one. So, I'm trying to get to where I can stay ahead on my videos, because I've been, let's, let's be fair, I've been kind of slacking on my videos. But I've been going for more of a, quant a quality over quantity uh, approach here lately, so I don't just want to pump out a video that's going to be like, oh, da -da 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 -da, and you didn't learn anything from it. So like I said at the beginning, I'm making these videos now to learn something. I'm, I've am i kind of settled on what I want to do. I want to teach. That's what I want to do. I want to teach you guys the things I know. I want to help you on your path, whether it's being a hot rodder, whether it is being a regular mechanic, or whether you're just trying to 
fix your car because you don't have any money to pay a mechanic. You know, I want to make a video. I want to make videos for everybody, all, all, all kinds. And I also, at the same time, I don't want to bore you to death. You know, I can't stand watching a video where somebody explains to me where every single bolt goes. And I know that some of you out there may be like, yes, this video was awesome. It was very informative because it showed where the bolt goes. That's just stuff that, I mean, if you're out here doing it, you can find the bolts. I mean, that's just something that you got to learn right off the bat is that nobody, nobody's going to be there all the time watching over your shoulder telling you where all the bolts are. So, that's why I don't do that. Just in case people, because people ask me, why don't you do this? Why aren't you like this? I have my own way. You know, we're all different in the way that we're born, and I have probably a different outlook than you do. And that's that's good. That's what makes us. That's what makes us unique. You know, that's why all of us can do different things. You know, that's why I can make a vehicle run again the way that it did whenever it was new. And that's why you know, you do whatever you do, right? And you're good at it. Yeah, that's another thing that that kind of I guess makes me more versatile. You know, I grew up doing electrical work. I, I mean, I, I build new buildings all the time. That's my job. You know, that's what I'm working right now. And I don't know. I feel like we can all, you know, benefit from learning something new. Uh, I, you know, if you learn something, if you learn one little thing new every day or every week, you're improving yourself. You're making yourself better for the future. Because, you know, in the future, these cars are going to be driving themselves. You know, and it's going to be on us because we're going to be the ones who are out here fixing them. You know, it's going to be on us if they work or not. And, and who are they going to report the ticket to? Who else besides us? Because it's our fault. Because we didn't fix it right. So, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And hopefully my rants haven't bored you to death. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also, don't forget to subscribe.